case is due to Allah. Brothers and sisters, as you heard earlier, in just a few minutes, all of us will be making a trip. A lot of us are going to London, even though you didn't board a plane today. All of us going to take off from Phoenix and go to London. Our brothers in London want to hear the truth. They want to know what is this message that is electrifying the people? What is this message that is making all men and women stand up strong? We want to be found today, brothers and sisters, being dutiful to God and God alone. That's why our teachings from the most honorable Elijah Muhammad and being reminded to us today by the honorable minister Louis Farrakhan, they're pointing us to God. Because when we fear no one but God and God alone, we don't care what happens to us. They can kill us. Some of us, they may have to jail us. Or, but the bottom line, brothers and sisters, we cannot allow them to have our minds. We must submit our minds to God and God alone. So I love it when I pray. That's my refuse tech. I don't go to mobile or arco. I go on my prayer rug. That's where I feel good. That's where I stand up and say, God, try me again today. Because every day is trial and tribulations today. Oh, I'm on fire today. I can't wait for the divine message. All oh, praise is due to Allah. So today, we're going to make our word to be united. To be united on the spirit of truth, freedom, justice, and equality. Do not be confused. It's that time. Come on now. Here he is, Minister Farrakhan, live satellite. In the name of Allah, the Beneficent, the Merciful, we give him praise and thanks for his goodness and his mercy to the human family. The greatest of God's mercies is that he sends into the world prophets and messengers to bring to the human being divine revelation that guides us and opens the secrets of his creation to us that we may get on the path if we have lost it toward perfection. The human being must at some point become perfect. And the only way that the human can become perfect is if we are in perfect submission to the will of the perfect God. We thank Allah for Moses and the Torah. We thank him for Jesus and the gospel. We thank him for Muhammad and the Quran. Peace be upon these worthy servants of Allah. I am a student of the Most Honorable Elijah Muhammad and I could never thank Allah enough for intervening in our affairs and raising up among us one to lead, teach and guide us into that process that would make us what he created us to be in the beginning, the righteous. We say it in Arabic, Muslim which means one who submits entirely to do the will of God. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. That is what all of us are created by Allah to be, yes, the righteous. Circumstances have made us other than that. So the Bible says we are born in sin and shaped in iniquity. 
So we have to be reformed and reshaped that we might be what God would be pleased with. I thank Allah for the Honorable Elijah Muhammad and I greet all of you, my dear brothers and sisters, with the greeting words of peace. We say it in the Arabic language. Assalamu alaikum. First, I would like to thank uh, Minister Patrick and the laborers and the believers here at Muhammad Mosque number 32 in Phoenix, Arizona for your hard work in acquiring and beautifying this place as your humble mosque. Yes, sir. I'm honored to be here with you today and I'm honored to be able to broadcast what I'm about to say live by satellite to the United Kingdom. So I want to thank Minister Hillary and all of the believers in London and my many supporters for their hard work in bringing this satellite broadcast to the United Kingdom and to all of the Muslims in the 140 mosques in the United States under our leadership and the many that are watching by satellite. I'm honored to be with you in your homes or wherever you may be watching this particular broadcast. I'm broadcasting from Phoenix. Yes, sir. <laughs> Phoenix is where I come to rest and regroup yes, sir. after a hard drive to spread the message yes, of Islam. It is a place that the Honorable Elijah Muhammad found refuge and for the last 25 years I have found Phoenix to be a blessing to me because whenever I'm stressed and and out of sorts I will come to Phoenix and get in this beautiful sunshine and, and to be among the believing community. But I think Minister Hillary and the followers in the United Kingdom and my friends and supporters for giving me this opportunity to speak live and by satellite for the first time to the people of Great Britain. I want to thank the barristers, the lawyers that have made it possible to fight a, a case that was for the first time citizens of the United Kingdom fought their government to lift an unjust ban imposed on me now for nearly 17 years. I would like to thank um, Nathan Ryder, Sadiq Khan, Mr. Uh, Queen's Counsel Blake, and all of those who fought that case, and the support of all of the black uh, brothers and sisters of the United Kingdom who felt that it was unjust to keep me away from a visit yes, to my own uh, following there in the United Kingdom and to give the people of the United Kingdom a chance to see me and hear me and judge me for themselves. So today, in the beautiful hall where they are meeting in London, the people of the United Kingdom will have a chance to see me, hear me, and judge me for themselves. Now, the... Uh, the voice there in, in London, the black newspaper. I'm so uh, impressed by the wonderful article uh, written 
by our sister there and the way the, the voice handled my presence or my article or my interview is one of the best that I have seen written about me by any black newspaper in America or in Africa or anywhere else. It was written by our sister in London. Now since time is short, I better get right to the business. For nearly 17 years, the British government has seen fit to deny me the right to visit the United Kingdom to address my own following there and to address the people of the United Kingdom. Minister Hillary and the followers there engaged a number of lawyers to bring a suit against the British government to lift their ban on my travel there. So attorneys Nicholas Blake, Sadiq Khan, Matthew Ryder, Raza Hussein, and Tamara Mohammed, I truly thank you all. I would like also to thank the late Bernie Grant, Member of Parliament, and all of the organizations that joined with Minister Hillary and the Believers to fight for my presence in the United Kingdom. Their courageous fight is recorded in this little book. It's titled, When Justice Calls. This book chronicles the struggle of the brothers and sisters in the United Kingdom to lift that ban. Unfortunately, the cost to bring me there and to fight that case was very, very great, yes, and they still owe on that legal battle. So the sale of this book would help to defray yes, that expense. Yes, In the United Kingdom, this book is 15 pounds. Yes, it's 100 pounds of knowledge wow. of the struggle. And your 15 pounds a purchase of this book will aid the brothers and sisters to relieve themselves of that debt. Also, in the United States, this book is available. So in all of the mosques throughout America, under my leadership, and all justice-loving people, if you would like to help defray the terrific expense of that legal battle, you can purchase this for $10. It'll be on sale today on your way out and all the proceeds will be sent to Great Britain to help our brothers and sisters yes, there yes, in this day. Thank you. So to the Voice newspaper and its uh, reporter, Shirin Aguiar, Thank you very, very much. These lawyers engaged in a hard-fought battle. And it's the first time in the history of the United Kingdom that a citizen took the government to court and won. Through Justice Turner, the ban was lifted, but the government was so upset. They wanted to have the verdict overturned, so they appealed to the higher court. And they, not wanting to go against the government, overturned the ruling of Justice Turner. The highest body of law in the United Kingdom is the House of Lords, and they have refused to even hear the case. So it looks as though I will be banned from ever setting foot in the United Kingdom, except as I'm traveling there today by satellite.
they said that since 9 11 it would be in the public interest to keep me out so i want to ask a question what is it about louis farrakhan that the government of the united kingdom fears great britain has ruled and dominated at one time the whole world they have instituted their system of government jurisprudence education their social norms and values in every country that they conquered and became its colonial master I am really at a loss to understand since they have ruled the world and you cannot rule the world with inferior knowledge you rule the world because you have superior knowledge and if you have superior knowledge and have given that superior knowledge to your citizens why then should you fear anything coming from the mouth of a black man from America if you have taught your people the truth. Now, Great Britain has ruled the airwaves, the sky, the sea, the earth. Britain has become the greatest, the wisest slave makers and slave masters of any of the colonial masters and teachers of black people. It was the British, the English, who gave us Sir John Hawkins, who was the first slave trader who brought our fathers out of Africa into the Western Hemisphere. It was the British through Willie Lynch who wanted to make sure that we as black people in the Caribbean and in America would forever be under their tutelage and their mastery. Willie Lynch devised a system of divide and rule that exists to this very day. We have not yet come out from under the grip of Willie Lynch, the Englishman. Now, their European brethren joined in that effort, and many of us were brought out of Africa and settled in the Caribbean and settled in North America and uh, the Spanish were here, the Portuguese were here, the Dutch were here, the French were here. But when America became a great power, she wanted no other power in the Western Hemisphere but her power. So she knocked off the Spanish, she knocked off the French, yes. And so many of you who speak Spanish, that is not your language. Because you didn't originate in Spain any more than we who speak English originated in England. We are all victims of the same slave colonial master. America ruled the subcontinent of India. 600 million people under British rule. She had more possessions in Africa than any other European nation. She ruled the Middle East, the Arab world, Bangladesh. She ruled in Hong Kong and Macau and other places in the Far East. So she has spread out 
all over the world and she has put her educational system everywhere she ruled. The British system, like the American system, is designed to create in us a subject mentality. British subject. You are subjected to the power, the rule, the guidance, the tutelage of another master. So they put you in a box where you can't think beyond the way they have educated you to free yourself from their domination. So wherever the British have ruled, they implanted their educational system and their system of government and their system of jurisprudence. So right now in the Caribbean, you may have an independent flag, but you're not independent. You may have an independent flag in Africa, but you are not yet independent. You may claim that you are independent in the Middle East, but you are not yet independent. As long as you have to look to Europe as your master, instead of to yourself and to God, you are still under the tutelage of your former colonial master. Now, as long as Great Britain was ruling in Africa, the Middle East, uh, and the Caribbean and other parts of the world, Great Britain was more exclusively a white country. But starting in the 50s, when the surge for independence began in Africa with Osajifo Kwame Nkrumah, Azikwe uh, uh, from uh, Nigeria, and others. The British uh, Union Jack started coming down, and an independent flag went up. But their system was still in place. In the West, we have a little animal called the skunk. And uh, that little animal is very attractive looking. <laughs> it's black and white. It's a pretty little thing. But if you get close to it, its means of defense is the awful stench that it unleashes. And if it urinates on you, you have to take your clothes off. Don't worry about sending them to the cleaners. You bury those. If the urine gets on your skin, it takes time for that stench to come off of you. And if you happen to see that pretty animal across the highway as you are driving and you accidentally kill it, even after it's dead, its stench remains. Well, you know, so it is with colonial powers. Even after they're gone, they're still there. They're here in the way we think. They're here in the way we act. They're here in our educational, religious, and political training. So we need a complete washing. I think this is why Jesus said, wash and be clean. He wasn't just talking about taking a bath. But you got to wash from the stench of having had an intercourse with Satan. Now, now, naturally, naturally, after you get quote unquote independent, there are those who suffered under the new regimes. They were dictatorial, they were authoritarian, and the intellectuals could not survive in that.
kind of environment. So they fled their countries. And a great brain drain came out of Africa. And people started going to England. Well, Pakistanis went. Indians went. People from Bangladesh went. Arabs went. Asians went. And certainly in the Caribbean, we went. Now, you know, in Great Britain, in the, uh, I think it was around in the 50s, Great Britain encouraged members from the Caribbean to come to the United Kingdom. Come, like the, you know, the uh, Statue of Liberty. Give me your tired and your poor so they can stay tired <laughs> and poor. So there was an influx into Britain of Caribbean people from Jamaica, Barbados, St. Lucia, Antigua, St. Kitts, Trinidad, St. Vincent. Even though there were blacks living there before World War II, the majority came into the country after an invitation by the British government during the 1950s. They needed us for the cheap jobs that the British did not wish to engage in. Like America needs the Mexicans who will work cheaper than the so-called citizen. And then they call you undocumented aliens. When we are blessed to be in Phoenix, this is northern Mexico. So the undocumented aliens are not undocumented aliens. They're just Mexicans coming home. Excuse me. So when the blacks got to Great Britain, they used to see those same signs that we used to see. No blacks, no Irish, no dogs allowed. Isn't that something? You see, that uh, skunkish behavior is everywhere. The same thing that happens to us in America happens to our brothers and sisters in Great Britain or wherever we call ourselves finding refuge in a European country. When you first come, you're an oddity. But after many more of you come, and you keep on coming. And then you get this funny notion that the white woman is your woman. I'll get to that in a moment. But I have to. Now, the blacks suffered from appalling racism there as we suffered it here. The black and the brown, even the Asian and now the Arab has become the desert N-word. So we used to be the exclusive N-word. Now we have company. Welcome. So now y'all know how we've been feeling. <laughs> The second wave of immigrants started coming into Great Britain in the 70s. Uh, Idi Amin, our brother in Uganda, told the Indians that were there, uh, either you become a citizen and keep your money here, or you got to go. And they were making money and sending it out. So Idi Amin stopped that and then drove them out. So where did they have to go? They went to England. So you had an influx of Indians, then you had Pakistanis, all darker people now. 
they may not want to be black, but <laughs> sorry about that. You know? Everybody saw in England a place of refuge. And England couldn't tell her former colonial subjects, you can't come. So they started flooding. Then the children started growing. A new generation born in Great Britain. And like our youth here, see, it's a different old thing with young people. The young people are just different. They're a little more fearless. They don't bow so easily. So they started challenging white supremacy in Great Britain. But most Caribbean people are activists. So their fathers and mothers were activists, but they became more active and they got into fights with the police and with the white supremacist society. And there were, there were whites in England that said, we got to get these people out of here by whatever means necessary. Because England is supposed to be all white according to their thinking. OK. So now riots begin to break out over there like they broke out over here. And white folks began to see that uh, these uh, blacks are becoming a serious problem. But only in England it's a little more serious because now it's Indians and Pakistanis a problem. And, and then the Chinese got to fighting over there. And, and then after a while now with 9-11 it's Muslims now. It's this Islam business. So, it's getting really serious over there. But look at what is similar. The stronger we got as black activists or Chicano activists or Latino activists or Pakistani activists or Arab activists, they say, wait a minute. They're turning on us. Let us be wise Come on, and turn them on each other. So the blacks of the 60s were fighting the establishment. The blacks of the 70s were fighting the establishment. The blacks of the 80s fighting the establishment. The blacks of the latter 80s and 90s fighting themselves. So much so that in the 60s and 70s, you had a clear understanding of who your enemy really was. But today, your enemy is living right next door to you, selling crack cocaine to your babies, turning your little girls into prostitutes, drive-by shootings and gang warfare and turf battles now have turned our communities into war zones. This is not an accident. This is absolutely by design. So what is it that they fear from me? Look at my record. They, they argued my record in the court. Now you know when they charge me with being an anti-Semite and a hater. Oh, he's a terrible fellow, that, that Farrakhan. He's a hater. But you can't show one person that those who follow me have harm. We have not plucked the nail or a 
strand of hair from one white person, one Jewish person, nor our own black brothers and sisters. But we are the hate teachers. Huh? We're the anti-Semites. But it is fear of those who have hijacked Judaism. It is fear on the part of those who have hijacked Christianity. And it is fear on the part of those who are hijacking the religion of Islam today that truth will uncover, discover, and uproot. And that is why Jesus said in the Bible, you shall know the truth. And the truth shall set you free. Now Jesus, speaking 2,000 years ago, spoke of a future tense. He didn't say, you are going to know the truth right now. He didn't speak in the present tense. He spoke in the future tense. You shall. You shall know the truth. And the truth shall set you free. Set you free from what? Set you free from being dominated by a satanic mind. A satanic spirit that has you hating yourself and destroying your future by destroying one another. Who gonna bring this truth? Jesus left himself out of that. He said there's one coming after me. When he comes. He didn't say when I return. He said when he comes. Who is he? He's the spirit of truth. He will guide you into all truth. He. Jesus talking about somebody else. Okay. Okay. Now. See. What I offer that Great Britain fears is that particular truth that would free the black man and free all those subjected to white rule and free white people from the sick mentality of white supremacy. All are being manipulated by Satan. And all need to be set free. Mm -hmm. Well, who's going to do this? How are you going to do this? Well, this is mosque number 32. And so I'll start with this book, Quran. Now, beloved Christians, I study the Bible and I preach from the Bible. But this is a book that introduces itself to us from Allah. After the seven oft repeated verses, it reads like this. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim Alif Lamin I Allah am the best knower God is introducing himself to us as one not only who has knowledge but he is supreme in what he knows above all those who claim to know and then he says, this book, there is no doubt in it, is a guide to those who keep their duty. 
Now, I have picked up many books in my life, but I have never picked up a book that says from God that this is a book in which there is no doubt. So that means every word here that I read is light. Every word is true. So I want to start with a book in which there is no doubt. And since this is Mars number 32, I would like to read from the 32nd surah. It's called Al-Sajda. Sajda means prostration. One who bows down to God because of adoration for God. Listen to these verses. In the name of Allah, the beneficent, the merciful, I, Allah, am the best knower. The revelation of the book, there is no doubt in it, is from the Lord of the world. Or do they say he has forged it? Nay, it is the truth from thy Lord that thou mayest warn a people to whom no warner has come before thee that they may walk aright. Now, Great Britain, America, be honest. We are not walking aright. Our steps are not as God would have ordered them. Now, to the Muslim world, we have believed that Muhammad ibn Abdullah is the end of the prophets and he is he is this book that Allah revealed through Prophet Muhammad is the final revelation to come to this world before the judgment of the world now listen to me he says that thou mayest warn a people well you don't warn somebody unless something terrible is about to go down and you want to warn the people that they may walk aright and escape what you are warning them against. Uh -huh. But then it says that thou mayest warn a people to whom no one has come before thee. Prophet Muhammad was raised by Allah in Mecca. But Mecca had received a prophet. Talk to me. Abraham and Ishmael did their work in Mecca. Hud and Salih did their work in Arabia. So this verse of Quran is talking about a warner that's coming to a people to whom no one, no one had gone before him. Wait a minute. We got to reason this thing out. Allah says in the Quran, I have sent a messenger to every nation and to every people. Yes, sir. Come on. Who is the messenger that God sent to Great Britain? And even more important, who is the messenger that God raised in the United States of America? I 
want us to think now. Now. When a messenger comes or a warner comes, he comes to warn you about something of great consequence that will ill affect you if you don't change your way. Britain has had her way all over the world. Europe has had her way. America now is at the top of the pinnacle of power and influence over the nations of the earth. But is England righteous? Good question, good question. Is America righteous? Don't be afraid, I'm talking. Whenever nations have deviated from the path of God, there's a consequence for that deviation. You can't enslave a whole people and there's not a consequence. You can't steal land from the Mexicans and there's not a consequence. You can't destroy the Native Americans and there's not a consequence. You can't make war all over the earth and destroy people at will and there's not a consequence. I live in America. This is the land of my birth. I do not want to see America face a consequence of the evils that she has done, is doing, and is planning to do. But who will take the courage to stand up and warn America of the consequences of her actions. Who will say to Tony Blair and the people of Great Britain, you are embarking on a dangerous course? Who will take strength by their faith in God and their fearless nature? To warn the wicked of their wickedness and call them out of that behavior that they may save themselves from imminent destruction. Listen. That thou mayest warn a people to whom no warner has come before thee that they may walk aright. Now to the Muslims, see, we have become kind of arrogant in what we call our understanding of our faith. So the prophet himself said, three generations after me will no longer be of me. I'm not misquoting. So if the four rightly guided caliphs, Abu Bakr, Umar, Uthman, and Ali, and the Sahabas or the helpers of the Prophet were more pure, more close to him, who hijacked the religion, where hypocrisy came in the ranks of Islam. Listen now, don't tell me that hypocrisy didn't come in the ranks of Islam. And don't tell me that hypocrisy has not come in the ranks of Judaism and Christianity. You got to listen today. How come Jesus taught in Palestine and the seat of Christianity is Rome. How come
Jerusalem in 325 A.D. They had to have a council, the first Vatican Council, to decide what they were going to believe. What happened to what Jesus said? If we have Jesus' word, we don't have to have a council to find out what we're going to believe. Christianity got hijacked when Constantine became the emperor of Rome and became a Christian. And Islam got hijacked after hypocrites got into power and became caliphs. Oh, yeah. What does Allah say in Quran? The book in which there is no doubt. Satan talking. He and God having a discussion. And Allah says to Satan, uh, in words, Satan is talking back to God. He said, well, because you have judged me to be erring, I'm going to lie in wait for them in your straight path. You say it in Arabic, Sirat al Mustaqim. So if Satan is going to be in the straight path, now look at what he boasts. I'm going to come at them. Them who? The believer. From before them, from behind them, from their left side, from their right side. And I'm going to make all of them do what? Deviate. Do what? Deviate. Do what? Deviate. Well, once you've deviated from the path of God, you need somebody to guide you back to that path because you don't know how to guide yourself. <laughs> now listen, 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 listen. You can't guide yourself back after you've lost the path. Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, said, if you follow this Quran and my sunnah, you will never deviate. Well, evidently, something happened. So we have deviated. So maybe we haven't followed his sunnah as it should be followed or his way. And we have not followed the Quran as it ought to be followed. Neither have the Christians followed the Bible. Neither have the Jews followed the Torah. You have a few faithful Christians, a few faithful Jews, a few faithful Muslims. The rest are perpetrating a fraud. I'm not saying that we don't have good intentions. But Satan is happy with our good intentions. Because if you have a good intention and you're ignorant, Satan loves that. Because then I can help you in your ignorance to deviate more. So that you become so estranged from God that you don't have any more of his spirit or his power to change the reality under which you live. Listen now. Listen now. After the deviation of the Muslims, these crusades got started. We're fighting the Christians of Europe. But this is not the way that Allah asked us to spread the word. Not from what I read in this book in which there is no doubt. It says call to the way of your Lord with goodly exhortation and in the best manner. Call to the way of your Lord with justice. 
Call to the way of your Lord with truth. See, goodly exhortation. It didn't say kill them. It said call them. If they make war on you, then the Quran says, fight with those who fight with you. But no Muslim should ever be the aggressor. There's no such thing as Muslims hating Christians. The Christian or Jews, the Christian and the Jew are called the people of the book. And Allah says in the Quran that wherever his name is remembered, we honor that synagogue. We honor that church, that cloister, that cathedral. If God's name is remembered there, then we as Muslims should protect such a house. So to say that Muslims hate Christians, is a lie. We see true Christians as believers. We see true Jews as believers. But Christianity has been hijacked. Hijacked by warmongers. A warmonger yet claiming <laughs> Claiming that Jesus said, blessed are the peacemakers. Well, if blessed are the peacemakers, cursed are the warmongers. Cursed is Tony Blair. Cursed is President Bush. Cursed are those who love war over peace and justice in the earth. The youth in America and the youth in Great Britain pose a problem. Listen. When the communist wall came down in Berlin, and it looked like Berlin, East and West were going to unite, I read in the newspaper that the CIA were bringing their agents back from Europe and Eastern Europe to work among the gangs. Listen up, man. Listen up. Now, what kind of work would a CIA agent be doing? Or an MI5 in England agent be doing among gangs? And don't any of you that are watching this think that you are not infiltrated by agents of the government of Great Britain even as we are infiltrated by agents of the government of the United States. The Bible says where there are two or three of you gathered together, there I am also in the midst of you. That's Jesus talking. Well, the FBI says the same. Wherever there are two of you, I'm the third. So if you don't have your agenda right, you are already known by the enemy. And what is his aim among the gangs? Bring in drugs and bring in guns. And then put one brother against another. So that the youth can kill themselves rather than become a problem for the master. And that's what's going on in the United Kingdom as we speak. That's what's going on in Phoenix as we speak. That's, right. that's, that's what's right. going on in every city and every town in America. And it's spreading now in the Caribbean. And it's spreading in Africa along with AIDS. Well, you talk about weapons of mass destruction. 
AIDS is a biological weapon. And crack is a chemical weapon. These are weapons that are destroying us wholesale. So instead of our turning our attention to the injustice of a government, we have turned our attention and our anger and our frustration and our bitterness on one another. As it is in America, so it is in the United Kingdom. 70% of all the homes are headed by a female. Where did the men go? That they would make a baby and run away from their responsibility. Let me bring this topic to a conclusion. The prophet, peace be upon him, said, Islam began strange. Listen to the words. Islam began strange. And it will again become strange. Give glad tidings to the strangers. I love that. Now since our brothers in the Caribbean from the Caribbean and from Africa and from Asia are in the United Kingdom and we and our Latino brothers and sisters and our Native American brothers and Asians and Arabs we are all here in America it's a great country with a great promise but racism and white supremacy is destroying America and is destroying the United Kingdom. Now the Muhammad that is prophesied, listen to me, he speaks not only to men, but he's also sent to the jinn. The jinn in, in uh, I guess you break it down, demons. But Muhammad had to give a message to the men and women and to the jinn. Okay. Now, let's go to the second surah of the Quran, this book in which there's no doubt. And when thy Lord said to the angels, now God is talking to the angels. I'm going to place a ruler in the earth. They said, will you place in it such as make mischief in it and shed blood? And we celebrate thy praise and extol thy holiness. And Allah said, surely I know what you know not. And he taught Adam all the names. And then he presented them to the angels. And Allah said, tell me the names of those if you are right. And they said, glory be to thee. We have no knowledge but that which you have taught us. Surely thou art the knowing, the wise. Then Allah said, O Adam, inform them of their names. So when he informed them of their names, he said, did I not say to you that I know what is unseen in the heavens and the earth? And I know what you manifest and what you hide? And when we said to the angels, be submissive to Adam. Now listen to this. See, angels are the, the right hand of God. They do God's bidding. They're fixed like that. But then God makes a man from dust. And then he tells the angels 
be submissive to Adam. And they all submitted, but Iblis. Now, there's scholars argue, well, Iblis was not an angel. But it says here, he was talking to the angels. And all of the angels submitted except Iblis. Now, we're going to argue with this, Muslims. It says, he refused and was proud. And he was one of the disbelievers. You said, well, an angel can't be that. Why not? Lucifer, according to the Bible, was one. But he rebelled, didn't he? Now look, he, was, he refused and was proud. And we said, O Adam, dwell thou and thy wife in the garden and eat from it a plenteous food wherever you wish and approach not this tree lest you be of the unjust. Now, Allah says to Iblis, what hindered you from obeying when it was I, God, who commanded you? What stopped you? And Iblis starts talking back. He said, I didn't submit because I am better than he. For I am made of fire while he is made of dust. Now here you have two uh, uh, material realities. Fire, dust. So the fire feels I'm better than the dust. And that's the mentality that starts us on the journey to becoming a devil. Your hair, straight, mine curly, someone else is nappy. Which one is better? One brother five foot one, another brother seven feet. Which one is better? One brother got a body that looks like he's fashioned in stone. And another brother so skinny that you hardly could find him. Which one is better? One brother in the class gets an A plus and another struggles to get a D. Which one is better? One is white. And the other is brown or black. Which one is better? One is from Phoenix and the other is from Mississippi. Uh, which one is better? See, when you start taking physical realities to impose on your mind, the thought that because you come from here as opposed to there, you were born in this family as opposed to that family. You have money and this family does not. You have education and this family does not. That that makes you better than you're in the way now of becoming a devil. Because when you think you're better, you become proud of that thing that you think makes you better. And then the person that you don't think is as good as yourself does not deserve what you deserve. So then you become an oppressor and a tyrant over that which you feel is inferior to you. See, so when white people start thinking because they're white, they're better. See, they're becoming demons. Because then you deprive another human being of that which God intended for all his creatures, freedom, justice, and equality. So now, you have become sick, Great Britain, sick Europe, sick America, 
and you would make everyone that you teach sick with your sickness. So I'm going to send me a warner to whom no warner has gone before. Second Surah 1 20 Seven. Abraham and Ishmael in Mecca. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they are raising the foundation of that ancient house, Kaaba. And their prayer is, Our Lord, accept from us. Surely thou art the hearing, the knowing. No matter what you do in life, you should always seek God's acceptance of your work, your activity. You know already if it's an unrighteous activity that God will not accept it. But Abraham and Ishmael knew that their activity was a righteous activity, so they asked God to accept their work. And look at what they said. Our Lord, make us both submissive to you. And raise from our offspring a nation submissive to you. And show us our ways of devotion and turn to us mercifully. Surely thou art the off returning to mercy the merciful. And our Lord raise up in them a messenger from among them who shall recite to them thy messages and teach them the book and the wisdom and purify them surely Thou art the mighty, the wise. Now, Prophet Muhammad fulfills this because he was made submissive to God and he made a nation submissive to God. He recited God's message faithfully. But three generations after him, deviated from him and a whole new world was established the United States of America the Western Hemisphere and no warner has been here we black people for 300 years in the Caribbean and in America stripped of name, language, culture, religion, God, and history. So when somebody strips you of that which makes you who and what you are, you are like a tree without roots. You become dead as a people. This is why the Pakistanis can make it in Great Britain. The many of the uh, European, uh, pardon me, the Asians and the Arabs can find that unity and make it. Yeah, right. But you, the blacks yeah, right. from both Africa and the Caribbean, but mainly the Caribbean, are so steeped in ignorance of yourself and your history in the world that it becomes very difficult for us to unite. And America has enslaved us for 300 years, beat us, lynched us, castrated us, burned us at the stake, and then for 100 years after slavery, denied us justice. Somebody needs to warn America. And somebody needs to guide us that we may walk all right. Somebody needs to help America come out of the mindset of white supremacy. I'm better because I'm black. Or I'm better because I'm white. Or I'm better because I'm a Christian and you a Muslim. A Muslim. <laughs> I'm, I'm the chosen because I'm a Jew. See, all those kind of mentalities get you all messed up. It doesn't mean that God don't choose you, but he chooses you to work. 
He don't choose you to run around talking about, you know, I'm chosen. <laughs> if I chose you to be the plumber, then don't let me see you with the pipe in your hand doing nothing. Do the work that you're chosen to do, then you justify getting the contract. But if you're a Jew and you say, God chose me, what did he choose you for? To hide the light under a bushel basket? And corrupt the light? This is why you don't like Farrakhan. I'm not anti-Semitic. But what I am anti are those who say they are Jews and they are not. Those who say they are Christians and they are not. Those who say they are Muslims and they are not. Satan makes Muslims, not the right kind. Satan makes Jews and Christians. He gives you the name but not the spirit. So you can masquerade like you love Jesus, but what are your works? You can masquerade like Moses and the prophets that came to Israel are your prophets, but what are your works? And we can masquerade like we know Muhammad, but what are our works? You tell a tree by the fruit it bears, you can tell a man by his works. In my conclusion, Islam began as a stranger. Yes, sir. And it will again be a stranger. Give glad tidings to the strangers. In the Bible, in Genesis, Listen to these words. It's the 15th chapter of Genesis. Let me get it for you. All praise is due to Allah. My brother said he was feeling good today. So am I. <laughs> Listen to these words. God is talking to Abraham. He says, know of a surety, Abraham, your seed shall be a stranger in a land that is not theirs. And they shall serve them, and they shall afflict them 400 years. And also that nation whom they shall serve will I judge. And afterwards shall they come out with great substance. Now, see, Prophet Muhammad was not a stranger in Arabia. Islam was strange, not the Prophet. He was in his own house among his own tribe who turned against him after the revelation came to him but he was not a stranger but it said your seed will be a stranger in a land that is not theirs and they shall serve them and be afflicted by them for 400 years here we are we're strangers here yeah, a dog has more benefit in America. They have animal protection rights. No dog profiling. But there's racial profiling for blacks and Arabs and Hispanics. There's racial profiling in the United Kingdom for dark people. But if a dog is wounded, They'll stop and pick the dog up. That's right. That's right. Take it to an animal shelter. Right. Or take it home. Right. Feed the dog from their table. Right. Let the dog sleep in the bed with them. Right. Hey. Come on. Go ahead. But, but you, there was no room nowhere for you. A stranger 
in a strange land. That's right. How did Islam begin for us in America? It began strange. So that Muslims who are already born in the faith, they looked at our way as strange. They're not true Muslims. But you didn't understand. We were involved in a process. And we have to speak not only to the human being, but we got to speak to the demon, to the jinn. So, give glad tidings to the stranger. Glad tidings mean good news. Have you heard the news? What's the good news? The good news is that God has not forsaken us. The good news, United Kingdom, God has not forsaken you. The good news is that as it was in the beginning, so shall it be in the ending. The good news is that God will send his spirit among you. God will raise you up from your condition of ignorance. God will purify you. And God will make you a leader for the whole world. Listen to me. Dear Arab, the prophet said to you that he heard the footsteps of Bilal going into paradise ahead of his own. There's nobody's foot going into paradise ahead of the prophet. The prophet has set paradise for all humanity. But what does it mean? That the Arabs would lose their way. And as Bilal was the caller, the muedvin, who called the faithful to prayer. Listen, listen. That in the western hemisphere, where the prophet said he would, God would make the sun to reverse its course and rise from the west in the latter day. That out of the west is going to come a knowledge. Out of the west is going to come a light. Out of the west is going to come a power. And from among our weak and powerless people, God is going to raise up warners. So in my conclusion, we warn you, Mr. Blair, don't be a lapdog for President Bush. We warn you. Don't take the British into a war. Oh, brother, you didn't eat maybe yesterday, and when you're on post in these lights, you might uh, have a little problem, but the air and the little water, he'd be all right. That's the way life is. Some of us will get to the door and fall out. But there will always be some to go on. So don't worry about death. Don't worry about nothing. God is in power. And I tell you, my subject, Savior's Day, will be the final call. The final call don't last forever. But I'm telling all of you that America is in trouble. And a warning from God has to be delivered to this nation. Take it or let it alone. But ain't none of us going to get away from the chastisement of Allah. If you think you're going to play with religion or play with God or play with truth or play with his prophets. All of that game playing is over. If you're a Jew, you're going to be one. Or you're going to die in rebellion. If you're a Christian, you better be one. Or you're going to die in your rebellion. And if you're a Muslim, you better rise up and be one. 
or you're going to die in your rebellion. God is going to weed out all hypocrites, all liars from his kingdom. So I thank you for listening. And may Allah bless you as I greet you in peace. Assalamu alaikum. <laughs>